Hi, good afternoon, and welcome to the Veeam Data Center and Cloud Digital Series. Uh, this is our second of four events that are focusing on the domain of data protection, all things backup and disaster recovery. You can find more information about our upcoming events at rogers.com slash DC events. That's rogers.com slash DC events. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself this afternoon. I'm James Tantrum, the Director of Product Management for Data Center and Cloud here at Rogers for Business. I'm really accountable for the commercial management and delivery of our co-location, our cloud managed services, and of course, our data protection products. At Rogers Data Centers, our mission statement is really to help organizations realize the full um, potential of their digital transformation uh, initiatives through the adoption of multi-cloud. Multi-cloud is about helping organizations achieve the right balance of cost, performance, control, scalability, and of course, always be secure through the adoption of cloud, uh, co-location, on-prem, uh, and hyperscaler technologies. Very lucky to be, uh, to be joined today by uh, Robert von Mieren. Robert is a, um, a sales engineer or systems engineer at really one of the leaders in the data protection domain, which of course is Veeam. Uh, Robert brings, um, it comes to us today from the Alpharetta office uh, of Veeam. He is an experienced software um, technical support engineer, and most recently with, with uh, GE Healthcare and joined Veeam back in November of 2018. He has a, a Bachelor of Business Administration focused on IT from Keenshaw State University. So what is it that we're trying to achieve today? What's the agenda? Well, Veeam is really gonna walk us through um, how data protection and how backup can be a very critical and important tool in protecting against the current threat of ransomware. Uh, we know actually through Veeam and recent surveys that you know, in terms of 2020, the top concerns for businesses when it comes to data protection is essentially uh, ransomware and protecting against ransomware and of course recovering from ransomware um, when it does strike. And the second really being um, the lack of or the challenges with respect to finding those critical IT skills and resources that can really ensure that services and products like Veeam uh, are implemented and are, are operating. So we'll get through really what ransomware is about, how it is uh, transmitted and how it infects organizations, really some of the costs that we're seeing within, within the market um, in terms of recovering and getting back uh, access to that data. Of course, going into Veeam, who they are as a technology vendor, uh, what their technology platform provides for uh, and what its solutions. And then we'll talk a little bit about just what's happening in the domain of Office 365 um, and backup. One of the big misconceptions that I consistently hear from, uh, from the market and from customers is the assumption that by simply being in the cloud that data is protected and is secure. And um, in fact, if we look at Office 365 and the, and the terms of service, uh, it is what's known a shared responsibility model. And it's very clear in that uh, model that it is actually the customer, the end tenant that is responsible for data, protecting that data and backing up data. And so we'll talk about you know, one of the ways uh, that Veeam really helps protect um, the data that lives in that Office 365 environment that's become so ubiquitous, particularly over the last six months or so with, with COVID. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, Rogers and introduce Rogers as mentioned uh, Roger's mission really is to help organizations realize and harness the power of hybrid cloud in terms of truly realizing their, um, their digital transformation potential. And the way we achieve that is really by bringing a mix of solutions uh, to the table in terms of solving for business and IT challenges. And the way we approach um, those challenges <laughs> is really by looking across the breadth of technologies available whether it's continuing to leverage uh, investment and hardware that exists on-prem or in a co-location facility, whether it's harnessing really the power of cloud, whether that's private cloud or, or public cloud, uh, ensuring that all of the data and workloads that are hosted in those environments are secure and protected, and really by bringing all of those components together, 
uh, organizations really can uh, achieve and realize the power of a hybrid cloud solution where that infrastructure is optimized to the actual workload and really delivers on the right cost profile, the right flexibility, uh, the right elasticity, and of course is secure. So, you know, one of the things that we're seeing, and it really does tie into, um, you know, digital transformation as well, is just how important business continuity is. Disaster recovery and, and uh, backup are, and it's, it's more evident than ever. When we think about um, the impact of downtime, you know, on businesses that are increasingly running remote and running digital, uh, we're talking about loss of productivity that spans, obviously, employees uh, that are now mm -hmm. working home and cannot access critical business applications. Uh, we're talking about customers that can't consume digital experiences uh, and procure um, you know, digital uh, services. And so really has come to the forefront over the last six months or so, just how important it is for organizations to have one, a re robust business continuity plan that really defines the end-to-end -end process systems and methodologies through which a business recovers from really any disaster or, or loss of a business process or system. And of course, the part of any robust business continuity plan is a robust data protection or a disaster recovery plan that ensures that IT systems can be recovered and be up and running in the least amount of time possible. Theme Cloud Connect um, is one of the products that falls within the Rogers data protection portfolio. Theme Cloud Connect is really part of the feature set within the Veeam backup and replication platform. What it allows organizations to do is really leverage and target the cloud as a data repository for their backups. And what that does really in a matter of minutes, it's incredibly simple, a couple of clicks through the Veeam console, you're able to get to that three, two, one rule that is just so critical and I think foundational to having a robust data protection strategy in place. And 321 is really having three discrete copies of data on at least two different medium, and at least one of those being offsite. And Veeam Cloud Connect allows really a plus one on each of those components. It gives you that third copy. It gives you that second medium, which is of course cloud-based, separate from disk and separate from tape. And it leverages uh, the cloud to really be that offsite or secondary location that ensures that data can be recovered if there was some kind of critical failure at that primary location. Why is Rogers the right partner really in terms of, of data protection services? And I'll run through this quickly to really get into the ransomware discussion. One, uh, we host all of our data protection services inside uh, our Canadian tier three data centers. And so one, those data centers are really built to serve the, the privacy and security needs of the Canadian business. And so we, we have the experience, the policies, controls, and evidence to really protect data, whether it's SOC, uh, has SOC requirements, ISO, or HIPAA or PEPIDA requirements. We are data sovereign. So being a Canadian operator and Canada, Canadian owner of data centers, it means your data never leaves a Canadian jurisdiction. This is becoming so critical for organizations that are federally, federally regulated, whether they're healthcare, whether they're financial services, or whether they're part of really the, the public sector supply chain. Keeping data in Canada and secured within data is becoming uh, paramount. We are a full service uh, and support uh, oriented organization, meaning every product and service that we sell comes with really an end-to-end -end, uh, support model that walks you through every step of the journey, whether it's understanding the products, onboarding to the products, and ultimately the best practices and processes to follow when using those products. There's someone that you could speak to at every step of that journey. And I think finally, and, and most important when it comes to cloud-based data protection, Rogers never charges egress fees for accessing and validating data. And this has become a key um, concern and a key hurdle with cloud-based technologies. Uh, the majority of public cloud providers will charge in order to validate or recover data from their cloud platforms. And those costs 
can be substantial if you're looking at recovering uh, large databases and so forth. Rogers never charges to egress um, data from our cloud, and that allows data to be validated and to ensure that data has integrity at any time without penalty. So with that, Robert, we'll really transition to you and um, you know, let's get a better sense of just what's happening with ransomware and how we can protect against it. Yeah, really appreciate that, James. Um, and that was a really great introduction. Like we said, we're going to kind of talk uh, a little bit about ransomware as a whole, what Veeam and what we're seeing in the industry with customers, um, maybe give some specific examples, uh, then kind of dial in specifically on Veeam as a company uh, and some of the specific things we have that, one, help make us more resilient against ransomware um, or help us in a recovery situation um, should we be compromised. So to kind of lead us off there, we'll, we'll kind of talk about what are some of the most common infection methods that we see. And this is just kind of to familiarize ourselves with the terminology we may be using um, down the road in the presentation. Um, but I think a lot of us are familiar with things like Trojans. Uh, that's probably one of the most common attack vectors um, to get into the environment. Removable media. This one, the story I like kind of in the, the shaded text is really interesting. Um, but it doesn't always have to be a super elegant hacking, coding, algorithm type deal. Um, in this one study done by Google, they actually just dropped USB drives in a parking lot of a company. And they found about nearly half of those dropped kind of bait USB sticks were picked up by a user, plugged into the computer on the network, and thus could be an attack vector uh, to deliver ransomware into the environment. So not always something that's super complex and elegant. It can really be basic social engineering. Um, malvertising is we're seeing this a lot more and more with um, online ads becoming more prevalent everywhere, um, using those as a vector to, to gain a click um, and then do malicious actions in the background. Uh, social media and SMS, again, like malvertising, becoming much, much bigger of an issue nowadays as these become more prevalent, not only in our day to day lives, but our business life, right? LinkedIn, um, Teams, text message, that for work. Uh, things of that nature can also uh, definitely be used as an attack vector. So all things we want to keep in mind when we're kind of thinking about what we're actually protecting against here. A specific example, actually stateside here, I'm in, like James said, the Alpharetta office, which is in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, but what we're really talking about here is the cost of ransomware, and that's really a, a universal language there. Um, so this specific example is the city of Baltimore. Uh, they were hit with ransomware plus the 76,000 uh, Bitcoin bounty or $76,000 bounty in Bitcoin. Um, they ended up not paying the ransomware. And, and really what I like to talk about here is the twofold cost. One, uh, the roughly $10 million they spent in new infrastructure to, to replace everything. But that other cost vector, that $8 million, was actually from lost revenue. So not able to, to take online payments and things of that nature while they were out, um, almost equaled the cost of the actual infrastructure to replace everything. Um, so when we talk to folks about either being prepared for, for a ransomware issue or, or something of that nature, we like to not only think about the cost of the actual IT services, the, the hardware, the, the software on there, um, but also what would we lose from a business perspective? What services are down? What employee productivity are we losing? Uh, revenue uh, streams that we're losing during that time? Because all of that is included in that cost of ransomware. And kind of a, a good segue into this slide here is kind of the, the cost of ransomware, both in bounties and just recovery costs. We're seeing a rise um, from 325 million, which sounds like a big number, but compared to where we're at now, um, pretty tiny. Uh, back in 2015, um, up to 11.5 billion in 2019. So, and you can see that's only increasing and we expect it to increase um, as these attack vectors become more prevalent. So really kind of to, to dial in, we're going to talk about the Veeam solution for this after we kind of give a, an outline of, of what we're seeing in the industry. Um, talk about Veeam as a company, who we are, what we do for the familiar, and then dial into one, some specific resiliency techniques with your backup application, as well as some specific features within Veeam, both for your local backups and your offsite copies, such as your Rogers Cloud Connect, uh, that can help us uh, be more resilient against a possible threat. 
So I'll kind of try to keep these slides relatively brief, but like I said, I do want to familiarize everybody with Veeam as a company, as a vendor, um, if you're not already. Um, and you can see just some high level numbers. We surpassed 1 million in revenue uh, last year, a great NPS score that we are extremely proud of. Um, and if you're not familiar with that, pretty much how likely would you be to recommend this solution to a friend or colleague? That's what that NPS score gives. Um, so being so high up on that, that list. Uh, we take great pride in that uh, because we think we've built a really strong ecosystem both in R&D, support, and our partners such as Rogers. This slide kind of just backtracks our, our history a little bit. We started out specifically as a virtual backup company, VMware to be exact, uh, have since expanded into Hyper-V, physical workloads, AHV, um, and like James mentioned, Office 365 data, uh, which we'll get to in a bit. Uh, but specifically, some of the things we'll be talking about are some of those newer developments. Um, so if you see in the bottom right, Q1 of 2019, uh, we'll talk about some of those cloud storage options and, and secure restore um, that we think can have really taken a good approach to being resilient in that ransomware situation. And this is one of the last slides before we kind of get into the specifics, but specifically I wanted to kind of lay out the Veeam portfolio, right? That's, that's who we are as a company, um, but specifically from the technology we offer, what are we looking at, right? Um, specifically, we'll be talking about backup and replication for the most part. That's Veeam solution piece of software that backs up on-prem um, virtual workloads, VMware Hyper-V, um, physical like we talked about, you can kind of see the, the list of different supported vendors there. Uh, so that's what we'll be talking about for the most part, but you can kind of see it is that core piece in an entire portfolio that ranges from monitoring software, DR orchestration, um, things of that nature. But today, like I said, we're gonna kind of hone in a bit on, on backup and replication and what it can do for us. Gonna kind of take some of James' thunder there with the three, two, one rule. And, and what we like to do at Veeam is actually add on an additional piece to that. Uh, and we kind of call it the three, two, one, zero rule. Um, so we have our three different copies, two different media types, one offsite. Um, but we also want to make sure we have zero errors. So that gets into backup coverability verification, um, testing of our DR plan, things of that nature. So really when we talk about that holistic disaster recovery plan, recovering the event of a ransomware issue, um, the three, two, one, zero rule is really where we'd like to be. To get at that a little bit, a specific feature in our kind of backup verification technology is what we call Secure Restore. But to give you a little background, Veeam has functionality within that backup and replication software to boot up our VMs, verify that they're recoverable, so that we know going in, hey, our, our backups are good to boot. What we've done, as we saw in that timeline in Q1 of 2019, was add a Secure Restore that within that actual kind of isolated testing environment, we can reach out and talk to our AV vendor and scan those images with updated AV signatures. Uh, that can be done on an automated testing basis, maybe on our orderly DR test. Um, it can also be done as a step in a recovery process after a possible ransomware effect. So if it's a case where we've been infected with ransomware, it's made it into the environment, we're gonna go ahead and restore from our backups. We wanna make sure that that bad data, that ransomware isn't there anymore, right? It's not a day zero attack where it infected, sat kind of quietly for a month or two, and then it blew up and infected. We restore last night's backup, we've just restored the ransomware right back to where it was. So what this secure restore functionality lets us do is kind of in line in that recovery process, put this VM into an isolated network scan it with the most updated AV signatures, six month old backup, scan it with today's signatures, um, and make sure we don't have that malware in our backup image, kind of going undetected before our AV signature uh, caught it. Um, so you can kind of see that timeline of the actual day zero attack and recovery. Um, so in the past year and a half since this has been released, uh, we're seeing a lot of good uh, feedback from customers on this one. A little bit of a technical breakdown on kind of how that's working. I alluded to it. 
at a high level in terms of how we're going to boot this machine up into an isolated network to accomplish the scans. Um, and you can tell Veeam as an automated process what to do depending on the results. So if we find malware, do we abort the recovery um, or do we maybe just strip all the network adapters so you can go in there and clean what you need to and then put it back onto the production network. So it really gives you that flexibility to make sure what you're bringing back isn't also bad data and automate what we want to do depending on the results. Switching a little bit from the on-prem backups to our secondary copy, right? So a lot of times if there's a local attack, local backups have been compromised, our cloud-based storage is there to protect us, right? That's what we're going to download from and restore. But we also have to make sure that's protected as well. Rogers and our other providers do a great job of doing that. But you do have credentials as a, an end user to that cloud storage. So if an internal attack happens and they gain access to your on-prem backup server, it is possible that they could get those Cloud Connect credentials connect to the Cloud Connect and delete it. It has been seen before. Uh, most backup vendors that are popular enough uh, suffer from this type of attack. So what we've done with our Cloud Connect providers is, is build a feature called Insider Protection. And what this does is, is like James talked about, that off-site cloud repository um, gives you almost an invisible recycle bit. So when you go to Rogers and, and you start backing up into their cloud repository, they have to provide you credentials to connect via SSL connection uh, to send that data. Those credentials have access to only see specific things in the Rogers environment. What you can't see is that recycle bit. So if for whatever reason, whether it be ransomware or maybe even malicious insider possibly, uh, somehow gets to those backups and deletes them, we have a invisible to us copy that then our providers such as Rogers can load back into us for us to restore from. So we've seen many times where this was able to save us not only from ransomware, but accidental deletion, malicious deletion, which can happen. Um, so really one of those key, key factors in making sure that not only do we have an offsite copy, but that offsite copy is protected as well. Robert, I've heard this be referred to as three, two, one plus one in some instances where you've mm -hmm. got truly an air gapped copy that provides just that extra level of protection um, when it comes to really providing a bit of a firewall around uh, that data store that's backed up in the cloud from some of these ransomware attack vectors. Exactly, exactly. And and I like the 321 plus one. I haven't heard that before. I'm definitely going to use it. Um, but I like it because a lot of times we say that one, that offsite copy is, is that accomplishes the work, right? But a lot of times that's online. So if there's a connection to it with credentials that can be compromised, there's still an attack vector there. So really what we want is that plus one to be offline or immutable or hidden from the end user, which is exactly what we accomplish with that insider protection. Great point there. All righty. So the other type of cloud would be, so we've talked about kind of our disk cloud repository as a Cloud Connect backup. Uh, we also do integrate with object storage. So S3 API is, is definitely the most prevalent, whatever flavor that may come in. Um, we do integrate, and a lot of folks like this because it's more geared for dense, deeper storage, just based on kind of how object storage at a nuts and bolts level is configured. Um, so that is a, a really big popular option with users trying to move from maybe a tape-based backup or, or some type of removable offsite drives to a more cloud mobile option that doesn't take much handholding. And one of the things that has really come out recently with S3-based object storage um, that is getting a lot of folks more on the bandwagon because they feel more secure is the immutability feature backup. Um, if you haven't heard of immutable backups or immutable storage in object storage, I definitely recommend kind of doing a little bit of research on it. But what it does is it almost acts as, at least the way it makes sense to me, is worm media, if anyone's familiar. Mostly used with tape, uh, write once, read many. Uh, gives you that, that uh, locked copy, that locked version, if you will, of that file or that, that data block that we send there. Um, so that if kind of like the insider protection, nuts and bolts, they work a little differently, um, but they give you kind of the end result, same end result. 
Um, so if we back up to immutable object storage um, and you try to delete the backups out of the Veeam console, maybe accidentally or again, possibly malicious user, um, we'll get a big red X saying, hey, it's immutable, we can't delete it. Even if we go into that storage account, uh, Rogers object storage, uh, AWS, whatever that, that S3 storage might be, and get root account privileges and try to delete it, it gives us a version, almost like that insider protection, to roll back to that can't be deleted for X amount of days. Um, so that I, we've seen a lot of momentum around object storage with um, it is having that kind of like what James and I just mentioned, that one plus one, where not only is the copy off site, but it's offline and or immutable. All right. So to pivot a little bit from the, the backup and replication software, we talked about kind of um, how we can leverage antivirus to, to scan those backups with updated signatures and, and make sure we're not restoring bad data, how we can leverage an offsite copy of our backup with Veeam and make that more than just offsite, but also protected while offsite. Um, but to kind of pivot into another piece of the Veeam portfolio, uh, Veeam One. So typically, um, Veeam Backup and Replication and Veeam One are purchased together. It's called our Veeam Availability Suite. Uh, they can be purchased standalone, but, but typically they're used in conjunction. Um, and what this does, it's a holistic monitoring solution that doesn't just look at backup activity, but also just monitors your VMware or Hyper-V environment, completely separate of Veeam. Um, and what we can do there is do things like monitor on possible ransomware activity, um, suspiciously large backup size, because a, a lot of times, if there's a ransomware infection, your incremental backup, you know, those changes that are usually small every night, balloons up because we see the data is all new because it just got encrypted. So we have an alarm that says, hey, if you're incremental, your nightly jobs go from maybe 10 gigs a night to 400 gigs, something may be up there, we can alarm and then proactively go in. So Veeam One has a lot of features that we can use outside of just making sure we have a disaster recovery plan, but actually get proactive in our monitoring um, and a lot of powerful things there. So if disaster strikes, so we, we have our monitoring, we have our backups, but that ransomware, it, it made its way into our environment through whichever way. Um, really what Veeam stresses is we provide the ability to take this data, make it really portable, put it in different places to recover no matter what the situation. Um, but when you're talking a disaster recovery plan, we, we need more than that, we need a plan. Uh, that includes things like support vendor information, not just for backup, but applications that are running in production, we need to take orders. We need to make sure that if there is an issue when we come back up, everybody knows where to go to have that resolved. So things of that nature, defining our SLAs, making sure everyone's on the same page is really something we like to stress outside of just the particular features in our software that can help. Because uh, I like to say there's never going to be a checkbox that says stop ransomware, and that's all we do. When it's never going to be that easy. Uh, so it really is that holistic plan that Veeam can really power and help drive. Some, some things you may want to look into if that um, interest you. I like to think about infrastructure as a as code as part of this. So we have a lot of kind of interesting activity on our Veeam GitHub around kind of automating the recovery and, and playbooks and things like that. Uh, so there's a really strong ecosystem, um, not only around backup, of course, but also disaster recovery and, and kind of the, the things around backup that also are required when you think about that coming back up from disaster. And the last thing we wanted to talk about, at least from the Veeam specific end, like James said, um, was we were going to talk a little bit about 365. So the ransomware discussion doesn't also end here, by the way, guys. Um, if, if you haven't seen, there are some YouTube videos and articles coming about, about ransomware in Office 365. Uh, specifically, uh, the YouTube video I saw was a um, email attack. So phishing email was sent that then encrypted the users' emails uh, in real time and we had to pay Bitcoin to get our emails back. Uh, so when we talk about 365, there, there's a lot of discussion around, does Microsoft protect that data? And from a backup and retention perspective, we can talk about the shared responsibility model and kind of who it falls to at the end of the day to protect that 
um, stateful data, but we can also have things like ransomware um, in 365 that we can help protect from as well. But Robert, I'll just um, add on the Microsoft side because uh, the adoption of 365 has been, I mean, so rapid, so quick. And when we think sort of back to where our starting state was with the office environments, we were typically running, you know, an Outlook, an Exchange server on-prem. And, mm -hmm. you know, because these were running on-prem, they were typically included in, you know, just the core enterprise sort of backup uh, schedule and routine, right? As we move to 365, there has been, you know, some of this, I would say, assumption that, hey, the data is protected. And what we've seen is particularly in um, industries where there is seven-year retention or lifetime retention, that some of that compliance-driven need was, was lost. And what something like the Veeam Backup technology allows is, you know, to really continue to drive and get the benefit of the cloud. Uh, there's no going back from 365, right? The collaboration uh, that it enables, um, not just in Teams, but across all of the environments, um, the productivity suite and so on is here to stay. But the need to back up has not gone away. The need to be compliant has not. And so technologies like the Veeam Backup for 365 allow that data store that, you know, contains the team's messaging, the SharePoint files, um, you know, the OneDrive files to all be sort of copied to a separate uh, location that's, that's secure and air gap from that 365 environment. And just so much of the modern business is running on Office now. Uh, I think it, it goes without saying the importance of, of getting Microsoft back into call it that standard backup schedule and routine. Agreed, agreed. I think that's a great way to put it. And um, the Veeam backup for 365 was actually one of our fastest growing products with recent times, COVID and everything. It's quickly become our fastest growing product. Um, so there is definitely more awareness around the need to back up this the stateful data as that usage just skyrockets. Um, and But I think it definitely needs to be harped on more that just because that Exchange server is now in Microsoft and they're guaranteeing that you will be able to send and receive email 24 seven, the actual data, the contents of that email is not Microsoft's responsibility at the end of the day. And it's still ours to make sure either for compliance or, or um, regulatory needs that we take responsibility of that and protect that data. Great, I think we're um, we're just about to move into our Q&A segment. Um, so one thing we'd like to leave the audience with and just really recognizing, I think many of the challenges that we're all encountering, um, you know, over the last six months or so, particularly with uh, the desire to keep, you know, IT workers and employees safe out of the offices and so on. Um, we believe cloud backup is a great way to, to mitigate some of these intrinsic risks. And so and we're very pleased to be able to provide uh, promotion around our Cloud Connect product. And this again was really the, the cloud-based technology that interworks with the Veeam Backup and Re Replication stack to allow the, the cloud to be a target for, um, for those Veeam backups. And of course, this includes what we actually call ransom guard, but that insider protection capability that provides that virtual recycle bin or air gapped sort of virtual tape copy, if you will, that only Rogers can, can access, which means that, you know, any malware, um, any, you know, employee that is acting with bad intent can't reach that, um, that copy. Uh, it is only the keys, if you will, are only in the hands of Rogers. So it just provides that extra level of, of protection. And so with that, um, we'd like to introduce Samidi, who's our moderator today. Um, Samidi, any questions that um, you need to answer? Yes, thank you, James and Robert. We have a few questions here. Um, does cloud protect my workloads from data loss and failure? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And I, I think we've, we've answered it to an extent. Um, and the, the simple answer is no. Um, I think that concept of shared responsibility is something that every you know organization that's looking at the cloud needs to be familiar with. And, and what that shared responsibility says is that the cloud provider is effectively responsible for the core infrastructure. Meaning as Microsoft or as AWS, 
I'm going to keep the data center running. I'm going to keep the, the compute running. I'm going to keep the storage running. But the security and the protection of data is ultimately the customer's responsibility. And so it's very important as you consider cloud to ensure that, you know, in, in the context of that business continuity plan, that you've assessed the risks in terms of data loss, in terms of downtime and so forth, uh, as part of that shared responsibility model, and that you've put the right mitigation and protection in place. The great thing about technologies like Veeam and Veeam Cloud Connect is they interoperate with um, the cloud. And so they're not technologies that are designed, you know, just for traditional on-prem. Um, the Cloud Connect technology really supports protecting workloads no matter where they are. And of course, the data stores can be protected as part of that Veeam solution uh, using the Cloud Connect technology in one of our data centers. Uh, Robert, is there, there's anything you would add? Well said. No, I, I think we actually kind of got to that right before it was asked. So, um, yeah, that, that kind of end story, the, the overarching theme of the actual data is not what's guaranteed it's the service in those environments and, and those ex that exchange that SharePoint data is still subject to the 321 rule um, even though we're, we're now hosting it in Microsoft's cloud. Okay thank you. Our next question is uh, we used to take tape, back, take tape backups of our data pre-COVID. Can we adopt a cloud backup solution without any downtime? Yeah, another great question. And I think um, one of, I think, the challenges through COVID, and again, we touched on this, is that typically tape rotation is, it's a manual process, right? So it requires someone either to be dispatched and, and visit a data center location. If, um, if, if the infrastructure is in a data center for many businesses uh, where they host data in a wiring closet or a server room, there's typically an administrative staff that that you know rotates the tapes, packs them up into that Iron Mountain box, and you know basically couriers them off to the archival location. And with employees, uh, for the most part, outside of the office, um, you know, a lot of businesses kind of put on hold or paused uh, their tape rotation. And of course, that presents uh, a pretty significant challenge and risk because. You know, that's going to erode our ability to recover data if there was a, a failure. And so something like um, the Cloud Connect allows, you know, that same, you know, enterprise backup technology that, you know, is already being used but is being consumed or perhaps backed up to tape. That same environment now can be backed up to the cloud. And so the actual change from tape to cloud, uh, it's, it's very straightforward, uh, very simple couple of mouse clicks and essentially, you know, you, you're able to move from that on-prem tape to a cloud-based backup. Agreed. And I think you really hit the, the ease of, of how quickly we can get a backup going to a Cloud Connect provider. Um, it, it really is just a couple of clicks at a Veeam job to set our schedule, um, say what we want to backup and for how long. Um, so really there there is no downtime there and, and uh, saves us a lot of time. Great. Thanks, Robert. Yeah. Thank you. Our next question is, um, our concern about transitioning data to cloud is lack of visibility around data residency, sovereignty, and compliance. How can we move across these barriers? So this one for, for me and as Rogers, I mean, very close to our hearts. And I think, you know, there is, of course, with that acceleration in, in cloud technology, um, and increase i think in awareness around what it means to be uh, data resident versus data sovereign versus um and, and what that means from a data jurisdiction perspective and the, the story kind of goes a little bit like this where when we think about data residency data residency is really being able to point to a, a location a province or a country and say hey that's where the data is being located Data sovereignty and data jurisdiction is really about saying and being able to point to, well, where, where does the law sort of govern access to that data? And as Canadians, uh, privacy is, is extremely important to us. We in fact have uh, some of the best sort of privacy controls and, and protection in the world. So we, we know it's a, a critical uh, consideration for Canadian businesses as, as they look at the cloud. 
And um, when we think of data jurisdiction, we know that, um, and, and we're, we're sorry, Robert, but from a US standpoint, US law considers uh, clouds that are operated by US entities, whether it's AWS or, or Microsoft um, Azure, to fall into U US jurisdiction. And so it means that if your data is hosted, even if it's in Canada, but with a US-based entity, uh, US law applies in terms of who can access and who can request access to that, you know, to that data. Working with a Canadian-based organization such as Rogers means that data um, falls under Canadian jurisdiction because Rogers follows Canadian law. Uh, and of course, we follow Canadian law when it comes to privacy and, and data access. So I think it's a, it's a great question. It's something that, that obviously has long-term implications um, for the cloud. But just keep in mind and consider those concepts of a residency versus jurisdiction and what the implications are for your data. Yeah, and I, I think that was definitely. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to add there. Um, I, I think that definitely was uh, a question on the Rogers end for that Canadian kind of uh, keeping the data there. But from the Beam end, I, I just like to harp on the fact that we are working with our, customers, our partners like Rogers uh, to really enable them to do what they do best, serve their Canadian customers, offer that data sovereignty, and really bring value to them rather than kind of tie into whatever we decide to use. Um, so we really, really value that partner ecosystem um, with Rogers specifically and what they're able to, to bring around that, that the type of requirements. Thanks, Robert. Um, our next question is, how can we get a quotation for the service from quote to implementation? How long does the process takes approximately? Yeah, I mean, I, I'll obviously take that one. And what I'll speak more to is just the, the implementation. And so um, really what's required and you know what I would call it as the prerequisite is you're going to want to be a, a consumer or user of Veeam, um, backup and replication software. Uh, if you're using Veeam today, the Cloud Connect feature, which is the, you know, the capability that allows you to target the cloud, it's already built in. So you actually already own that, that feature. And so the next step is really, um, you know, ordering the Cloud Connect service from Rogers. We deliver that as a fully automated uh, workflow. So what that means is uh, you'll receive a set of credentials, you know, same business day that, that you, you essentially cut and paste into your Veeam console. Once you've entered your credentials, uh, you can effectively start targeting your next backup job into the cloud. And so many organizations go from you know, purchase to actual cloud backup within a business day, uh, very straightforward. And from a quote perspective, you know, we'll, we'll have a sales rep reach out and um, get your quote. It's very straightforward. There's a charge based on the number of VMs uh, or, or physical servers. And then there's a charge for um, the storage. And of course, one of the benefits of Rogers is there's no cost from a network perspective, meaning we don't charge to egress or, um, or upload your data into our cloud. Thanks, James. Um, our next question is, um, I don't have a dedicated IT prime and it has always been a deterrent in adopting cloud for our company. How can I begin my path to digital transformation and ensure that business and customer data is secure? Sure, and I, you know, I think the journey to cloud is um, it's complex, right? And we hear from Canadian business that it's overwhelming, that it's challenging to find the right skills. Um, there's even the question of where where to begin um, on that journey, and what digital transformation success really depends on is is a partner that can act as that trusted advisor, and so working with a service provider such as Rogers that is really full service, meaning we don't just focus on providing you know, the cloud servers and the cloud storage, we focus on delivering the outcome and the solution to our customers. And so there'll be someone from Rogers really you know, with your IT staff you know, at every step of that journey, ensuring they understand how the technology works, what the best practices are, and when it becomes time to implement that there is a professional services team that is there not just to help um, deliver the product, but is also there to onboard you and ensure that on day two, 
you know, you've got the capabilities to operate and manage the, the technology yourself. And so, you know, it, it, it is that trusted sort of advisor um, that really helps organizations succeed in this domain. Okay. Thank you. Um, I have one more question. Um, our guests are requesting to provide the link again for GitHub. Mm. Yeah, I can definitely do that. Well, and yeah, there's some really good stuff around automating your uh, uh, Veeam deployment there. We'll get that out to the uh, participants. And, and while we are waiting for that, uh, we're also getting asked if a recording of this session will be shared. Uh, the answer to that is yes, we will be sharing a recording of this session within the next 24 hours with all of you. Perfect, and that GitHub link should be there. It's been the, the GitHub link has been posted in chat. Thanks, guys. Sorry, I was just talking on mute there. Um, so, Robert, with that, I'd really like to thank you uh, for your participation today. I think it was a real honor to have access to obviously your technical expertise um, on the Veeam platform and technology. I certainly learned a few things that um, I didn't know that the product was uh, delivering today in terms of really managing ransomware not just in terms of mitigating, but helping protect on some of the recovery activities, which are you know, so important to, to prevent that reinfection, if you will, at the time of mm -hmm. uh, recovery. So uh, appreciate that. And so with that, I'd like to thank the audience and remind everyone that you can learn more about our upcoming events at rogers.com slash DC events. Thank you very much. Thanks.